be doing a quick bullet journal handwriting tutorial. I by no means think that my handwriting is very unique compared to people on Pinterest and Instagram and Tumblr and all those great sources for bullet journal inspiration. Um, but I thought this would be a fun video nonetheless and I do have a few tips that hopefully can help you out or that you can take with you when you're doing your next bullet journal um, planning session. So yeah, that's what we're doing today. I'm just going to get started right away. One of the first things, tips that I have for you if you want to improve your handwriting is to just like take a few pages at the back of your bullet journal and write like one word in as many different ways as you can possibly think of. Um, that is a technique that has uh, allowed me not only to improve my handwriting but find new ways to make my uh, fonts unique. So uh, yeah, I would highly recommend that you do that as well. So that you guys can get a really good idea of the differences of each font, I'm going to use the word cake, or I'm gonna write out the word cake for today's video. That's always the word I use to practice with. I don't know why, but it is. And uh, the first font that I'm gonna do is basically my classic handwriting one, my a classic handwriting one uh, in which I darken, as I've said before, any of the areas where I go downwards with my pen. So I'm going to do a little demonstration of that. You're going to start off by just essentially writing out your word in cursive, but what you want to make sure you have here is spaces in between your letters. See how I kind of gave enough room in between each letter? It's not clustered together. This is very important because when you go down and create these little bubbles wherever you've got a, done a downward stroke so here the C and we go down the A we go down a little bit so I'll do a little one there up and down up in the K and down around and down and the E up and down. But as you can see, we filled in a lot of those spaces from just the little bubble action that we've created here. So it's important that you give yourself enough room to do this. And then I'm gonna go in with my Faber Castell Pit Artist Pen in Medium just to fill in these gaps. Um, you don't have to do this if you like this the way it looks already, but I think this kind of gives you that faux not calligraphy, but like, I don't know, it looks like you used a really fancy pen to write this out when you didn't, and I love that look. I used essentially the same techniques in these two as I did in this one. Um, here I just did horizontal stripes instead of blackening the gaps completely out, and over here I left spaces in between the letters. And this is just an example, or two examples, of how small changes can have a big impact on your handwriting and your fonts. So it's all a matter of just experimenting and really having fun with things. Now because these do take a little bit more focus, I do usually just use my printing and do small or add small touches to my printing to make it look I guess a little bit more thought out. One tip I will give you when printing is to write uh, with your pen as vertical as possible. I know in my everyday rough writing I write on an angle, that's just habit, um, but when I'm doing my printing for my bullet journal I try and keep my pen as vertical as possible because it allows you to get those neat straight lines without a ruler. I tend to like to keep my letters very um, tall and narrow. That's just the look that I like. Here's one way that I spice up my everyday printing. I just kind of do that gap technique that I used above, uh, but instead of doing it wherever I move my pen down, I just do it in the dominant place that that happens. So uh, for example, like the K, when I'm handwriting, I'll darken the, the tall line here and the one over here. But when I'm doing the printing one, I just do it on the left side of the K. I hope that makes sense. Here's another example. Uh, here I made my letters a little bit more squished together and now I'm going to go over each of the letters and add like little ticks so it kind of gives it a thorny look. I love that a lot. As you can see here even making the gaps uh, wider gives a different look and uh, for this one I'm going to just fill them in again with horizontal lines. And there's an example of filling those gaps completely in with a Pit Artist Pen in Medium. Uh, one technique that I love to use whenever I do this font, this style in partic particular, is add a confetti. I think it gives it a super cool look. So I'm just going to show you how I do that. Essentially all you have to do, which I need my small Pit Artist Pen, not my medium one, 
is create mini triangles and you just make a ton of different triangles and try and make them go all over the place. You can even add little lines and that's all there is to it. It's simple, it's easy, it has a great effect though. I think it's perfect if you want to do something different for a title uh, as opposed to the typical banner. So yeah, love this. Another technique I like to use is extending my letters um, either down or up. Again, it's very simple, but I think it looks very modern, and I even like to add little dots to the ends here. I'm also a fan of the typical adding a little ball to the ends of your letters, and also making the first letter bigger than the other letters. You can even make your letters fat and short. I sometimes even like to use a ruler here to create two lines and make your letters hit the top and the bottom. There was a gap here that was really bothering me, so I just filled it with a random little creation there. Uh, but the last two techniques that I'm going to show are with my Tombow in the color 553 and with the bold version of my Faber-Castell artist pen. So for the Tombow, I'm just gonna do another simple print. Notice how I did fill in these lines here, and I did that purposely because I'm going to take my Tombow and fill in these spaces with color. But what I'm gonna do here is because this color in particular looks very watercolory, I'm going to let it kind of trickle out of the letters. I'm even going outside of the lines a bit. And I think that's a super cool way to add even some color to your pages. I've only just started playing around with the bold Faber-Castell pen, but it is a lot of fun because as opposed to writing with the tip of the pen, I like to write with like the flat surface of it. So you get like really wide lettering. Obviously these are no masterpieces. I definitely need more practice with this sized pen, but I am excited to experiment with it because I do like the bold look. And there you have it. There are the fonts that I like to use in my bullet journal. Um, hopefully you found something in this video that is of some inspiration or uh, assistance to you. I love how simple and easy these are to create while still giving my bullet journal, I think that extra something special. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments below if you have any other requests for bullet journal videos. Um, I am planning on doing a July plan with me, but I would love to hear in the comment section down below also whether or not uh, you would like me to show me making those pages. Uh, or if you would rather be more flip through style and I create the pages and show you uh, what I've planned out for the month of July. Uh, so I'd love to hear that feedback. I will see you all soon with a new video and until then, bye everyone.